There are 24 finalists competing for the 2013 EY Entrepreneur of the Year. We grow 120 million strawberries every year. I'm heading to the four corners of Ireland to hear about their journeys. The whole business is about change, and I've preached change for 30 years. This week, I learned from eight inspirational nominees in the industry category. So you taught Jimmy the Tipperary men how to hurl. We in EY built the Entrepreneur of the Year programme 16 years ago because we felt it was incredibly important to not just acclaim entrepreneurship but to give them that step up where entrepreneurs can actually tap into the right talent, can grow businesses nationally and internationally and create jobs but more importantly go into new markets, compete and win against much bigger companies. The panel of judges, many of them former winners themselves, have turned their focus to the industry category. But it's not going to be easy to choose a winner among the shortlist. When we see the quality of their businesses, see the uh, success that they've had, see the scale of ambition, it's incredibly energising, it's incredibly positive. It's always tough to choose a winner. Often there's a standout candidate. Um, this year it could be one of several. I'm Porik Okeja, and as chair of the judging panel, I enjoy nothing more than meeting business leaders at the coalface of the economy. In challenging times, their entrepreneurial endeavour is creating employment all over the island of Ireland. First up is an entrepreneur who has certainly been packing a punch, reinventing a traditional food business in the 21st century. Caroline Keeling is the CEO of fruit producer and distributor Keeling's. Her grandparents started the business back in 1937, but it has grown into an organisation that is 2,000 people strong. Headquarters is still St Margaret's in North County Dublin. But from this home base, Keeling's now feeds demand in the UK, Europe and Asia. Heading such a large business leaves Caroline with little free time, so she relishes her Friday afternoon training sessions. It's quite good at the end of a, a week, you know, take some exercise. I use a personal trainer, and to be fair, he does let me kickbox with him. So I have a bit of fun on a Friday evening. Caroline, this is a really class facility here. Overall, we probably have about 50 acres of glass, uh, growing a range of products in Ireland, everything from strawberries, raspberries, peppers, aubergines, and we also have about 100 acres under tunnels. This is a far cry from where it started in the 1930s. True, true. Um, my grandparents started the farm here in the 30s, selling our produce in the fruit market in Dublin. And we still struggle to get the price my grandfather got. First punnet of strawberries for the season, he used to be able to sell them for the equivalent of a day's wages. So he was some businessman <laughs> in those was, days. Growing up, I never planned to come into the family business and I did a chemistry degree, but dad asked me after a year or two to come join the company for a while. So I said, yeah, I'll do it for about two years. And that was nearly 20 years ago. And, and you're here since. I've loved it ever since. Since you've got involved, how would you have changed the business in the past number of years? It's been a, an extremely challenging marketplace in Ireland for the last five years. We sort of looked at our business to see how we can add value to businesses outside of the Irish and UK market. One of the really interesting things we were doing this year is we buy an amount of strawberries for Ireland from Egypt. This year we were buying for Ireland from Egypt, but we were also sending the product from Egypt to Hong Kong. Another innovation has seen the setting up of Keeling's Solutions, a technology division that harnesses the family's decades of experience. It develops software products to help other companies manage a produce business and is based in the former home of Caroline's grandparents on the St Margaret's site. I bet they never thought we'd be selling software to China and Europe based out of this house. We grow 120 million strawberries every year, every week. We taste a whole range of our current varieties, but also the ones we're testing and trialling. And um, the only way to test a strawberry. Let's eat it. Mm. Can I reverse my car in and put them in the boot? <laughs> They're beautiful. With seven more nominees to meet, I need to pick up the pace. And to meet my next entrepreneur, I come north to Frankfurt Lock.
In 2004, Martin Hamilton realised that his 300 acres in County Down was becoming unviable. So he made a move to add value to the land that he farmed. He set up Mash Direct and has been harvesting impressive returns ever since. This family enterprise is located on the shores of Strangford Lock and has made a big splash on the shelves of Irish and UK supermarkets. Martin, Ring Dufferin Bay, what a beautiful spot and there's a lot of farming history. Ring Dufferin Estate here that uh, we live on as a family and it's all potatoes right out here for this, this side and all the way back on the whole estate. And how many acres do you have all together on the estate? This estate is just 100 acres of arable farming but as a business, a family business, we farm 1,200 acres. Uh, I'm fifth generation and my sons are here on the boat with us, um, sixth generation of our family in farming. We started the business in 04 from a zero start and no customers. It has developed from that to 12 million turnover, 25,000 square feet on the ground at the minute and another 25,000 being built to keep up with demand. Farming, you're focused on your land, you're very passionate about your land and all farmers are and rightly so. And then moving that into the type of business you moved it into, that was, that was a huge challenge. The biggest learning curve was the, was the marketing side. We're working the whole of Ireland, is pushing down through Great Britain at the minute and, and into London. A very big challenge. When a customer goes into the supermarket to do their weekly or daily shop, whatever they're doing, we want them to go and look for Mash Direct. That's our whole marketing drive. It's, it's a daily thing that we do. You look on the customer as if the customer is, is sitting at your kitchen table exactly. and, and eating your food. Exactly. That's the only way it can be. And what's the single most important thing that makes you really proud of Mash Direct? Oh, it's easy answered. It's um, the fact that it's a family business. I firmly believe it. in Ireland it's the strongest business you could possibly have. Can you as a family switch off business totally? Just yes, out on the law. <laughs> you can't, out here. You know, just because you're a successful entrepreneur, that doesn't mean that there isn't work to be done around the house. Hey, Peter, you're always a man to let off the sparks, weren't you? Peter Dixon was born and bred in Liverpool. As a manager in British Gas, he was instrumental in introducing natural gas to Belfast in the mid-1990s via a pipeline from Scotland. Peter then took up the opportunity to become part of a management buyout and Kellen Investments has since developed the network under the brand Phoenix Gas. Hetty Heights for a man who as a youngster started out as a fitter and a welder. Anyway, I was out here doing a bit of welding and uh, one of my neighbours came walking along, he didn't recognise who I was. Next thing he brought this bike down and he said to me, you know, uh, you wouldn't mind uh, welding this for me, would you? I said, yeah, no problem, so I welded it up. And uh, before I could say anything, he gave me 50 quid. And a week later, I was walking out the door with a dog and I knew what the look on his face was. He was saying, why is the welder taking the dog for a walk? <laughs> You've given almost all your professional life to energy and gas. Yeah, I mean, I've never known anything else. I've only ever been a, a gas man. I left school at 16 and I'm still doing it now and I'm 53. And what brought you to Belfast? Well, in 1996, believe it or not, Belfast didn't have natural gas. So we had to bring a pipe across the Irish Sea. We had to then beach that pipe. We had to then build a gas network system throughout the whole of the Greater Belfast area, which constitutes half of Northern Ireland's population. This was the largest integrated greenfield development of a gas utility anywhere in the world. So it this had never, never been done before? It had never been done before. We'll, by the end of this year, have 170,000 homes and businesses using natural gas in the Greater Belfast area, which is coming up to 60% of the population converted to gas in a short period of time. Your background, your Liverpool background, was obviously fundamentally important and, and a working class background was not a disadvantage at all. So I've always been driven by my wish to not be poor again. Most people in, 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 from Liverpool don't see themselves as being English, they see themselves as being Liverpoolian. And at least half of them are Irish and the other, obviously half who aren't, lack ambition. <laughs> I'm driving into Dublin and look at the clock, it's lunchtime. The right time to meet the next entrepreneur. Brian Hogan started his working life in the 1970s as a baker in Kylemore, a family business. He worked his way to the top of the company and has guided the enterprise through many changes, from retail bakery into high street restaurants and now into commercial contracting catering. 
The Kylemore Services Group, KSG, employs a thousand people at 120 sites across Ireland and many of the company staff are trained in-house at the KSG Training Centre. It's all about consistency, it's all about making sure the chefs come to us, get trained and have a standard and operate at that level in every unit. You don't have to be afraid of it. It looks like a dragon, but it's not, okay? It's whether it's a cup of coffee and a, and a toasted sandwich or whether it's a, a fine dining meal served in a restaurant environment. Fresh crab meat in this morning? Yeah, nothing like it. Meat, yeah. Recruiting the best people, retaining the best people and training the best people is our core strategy. Where would I find your restaurants around Ireland? Well, uh, right across the spectrum, really, what we do is we create brands for our customers. So we don't put our brand out there. The group company is KSG, but we'll go in and say, what do you want in your staff restaurant? For example, in UCD, the client there wanted a very healthy offering. So we invented the Pulse Cafe brand, designed it, built it, put it into the cafe. Another of the brands within the KSG group is Two and You, which Brian has set up with two-star Michelin chef Patrick Ebo. Patrick, can I call you Porik? No, Patrick oh, is fine. <laughs> Tell me about the two of you getting involved in business together. So, Patrick had been asked a lot by his clients to do various events Absolutely. for him. Uh, he obviously, most of corporate Ireland dines in his restaurant and they wanted functions done. So we said to you, why don't we get together and form a company called Two and You. The two of us and you the customer. Oh, I understand. And we go in and we do very high-end hospitality and boardroom catering. You see this is very simple fish. Mm. Okay, now we cook it now. It's cooked perfectly. Did I cook that? You supervised. You see? No, I cooked it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. We're almost reinventing the wheel exactly. again. The, the whole business is about change. And I've preached change across the group for 30 years because the world is moving faster. Change used to be every 10 years. It went every seven years. It's now every five years. And people are so well informed. So we have to stay ahead of that all the time. These industry category entrepreneurs are from all over our island. And they're involved in all different types of business. Most of our industry entrepreneurs have had to be incredibly flexible over the last number of years as we went through significant economic difficulty. But what we see with this category of entrepreneurs is that they're fighters, they're winners, and they're really, really important, not just to Ireland today, but as the job creators into the future. In part two, I'll meet the remaining four finalists, competing to be the EY Industry Entrepreneur of the Year.